Hello Internet, Andrew Huang here again for LPX Studios, bringing you another exciting episode of WHAT'S IN THE BOX! Which I, which will I, oh, which I will go over in unboxing, setting it up, and a review of the device. Um, today's device is going to be the MOGA Gamepad for um, Android phones. And tablets, Android tablets as well too. Um, it's the pro size and not the regular one. And the price difference is about 20 bucks. Um, the reason why I got the pro size is because that's the only one that was available at Best Buy today. Um, so it was only a $10 difference between when I had my gift card. So that's why I purchased it. But it, apparently it's also bigger. So it's more comfortable in your hand. So and it's a win-win. Um, the reason why I got this was because I did a... I wanted to play uh, some of the Samsung Gear VR games on my phone, but the PlayStation 4 controller didn't quite pair up well enough, and the buttons, a lot of the buttons didn't work, so I needed a Android-specific gamepad. But as always, guys, if you just want to skip forward to the review of the device, I leave a link in the description box for all you mobile users, um, as well as there's going to be a link in the video for you guys to skip to. But let's go ahead and do the unboxing. And also, you know, there's going to be a link to the setup, too. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, it's the MOGA Game On Anywhere Pro Size Controller. Works with Android 2.3 Plus. Um, you should pretty, you, you, all of you should have a four point uh, up in now. Actually, I'm pretty dated, so when it was this? Oh, this came out in 2013. So it's almost two years old. It won Best Hardware at E3. <laughs> but let's go ahead and open this guy up here. All right, and I believe some of ow, ooh, almost cut myself there. I believe some of you actually already have this guy um, as your personal as your personal game pads here. Oops, sorry, hit the camera. Da, 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 open that up. Be careful when you use sharp edges, folks. You don't want to end up cutting yourself. <laughs> here we go. Oh, here you go. Works on phones, tablets, and te ooh, televisions. Oh yeah, Chromecast. Uh, uh, easy to set up and secure. All right, let's go ahead and uh, open this up. Oh, come on. They have these tabs all over. It's like they're making it difficult. There, oh, that, that was easy. Alright, let's see how this controller really feels. Take that out. Ready to... <laughs> really? That's your catch? Ready to MOGA? <laughs> Alright, whatever. Okay, let's go ahead and open this guy up here. Uh, okay. Instructions that I never read. <laughs> warranty I got my best buy warranty that's okay what's this yeah I'll figure that out in a second uh, I'm assuming char oh okay direct connection cable and charge cable I'm assuming okay let's take that out and here we go look at that wow that's actually really comfortable nothing else in the box all right that's enough of what's in the box <laughs> all right so let's take a look here all right, so that's where the uh, the phone will go into. It's, I don't know if you can see it in the camera. It says smart lock right there. All right. Oh yeah, on off. That's pretty pretty straightforward. I'm assuming it has like a charge base or something. Oh, okay. I see what this is. This is a stand. Oh, that's actually pretty clever. Oh, that's actually quite nice. Sorry, I'm looking at my camera at the same time. Oh, that's actually quite nice there. So it's, oh, for all you tablet users, there you go. I think you use it for your phone too. Boom. <laughs> but you want to use the phone on the actual drive here. So where's the charge area? Okay. Oh, cool. It's got it's got an actual like USB slot. So if you want to charge it via USB, you can there's a mini USB there for you. All right. That's actually it's really it's actually really comfortable. It actually, <laughs> I just realized this is actually like it feels like the Xbox One controller. Um, maybe Xbox One copy off them, but this is the Xbox controller layout most likely, and it feels really good, guys. It actually really feels, it feels really tight. This is, it's really comfortable. I actually personally, even though I'm a PlayStation 4, I personally like the Xbox controller layout better. Um, it's just, feels more natural for me, um, especially because it's weird having your thumbs that close together, but that's just my personal preference. I still like Sony better, especially after this past, uh, these past consoles, but this is actually not too bad. Um, let's go ahead and try to put my phone into here. Uh, how do I extend this? Oh, here we go. Yeah, there we go. Oh, oh, that's actually kind of cool. It there. That's a clever way to lock your phone in. It takes a little bit of force, but you actually got to push this guy out here and it locks back in. That's actually a really clever move on their part. So let's go ahead and put it in. So I'm going to sing it up there and 
Yeah, it locks in pretty well, actually. I thought, it w why wouldn't it move back more? But that's actually the perfect angle for this. Not too bad. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and turn it on and connect it, actually. So I'll just do it. <laughs> I'll do it while it's sitting like that. So we're gonna connect. Here we go. Connections, Bluetooth. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Moga Pro, Moga Pro Two, and it's paired. All right, before we start using it, we're gonna have to download the Moga Pivot app. So let's hear. Oh, there we go. Moga Pivot. Install that. Accept. Here we go. Let's go ahead and go through the setup. So welcome to Moga Pivot app. You after you open the app, but let's just go ahead and set up the controller here. You know, manage controllers. Okay, A is synced up. All right, guys, after you install the app and just all the other stuff, it pretty much already manages the controller for you as long as you set it up via Bluetooth. So as you see here, it says Moga Pivot. It says Moga Pro 2 Power, you know, Power A is connected. So Power A or B is A or B mode. But let's go ahead and test the button layout and see if it actually works this time. So I have a game up, which I'm hiding in order to protect myself here. But you can go ahead and uh, so you see like it's moving around. So the joypad still reacts. The D-pad's not reacting for some reason, but I think it's just the program that I'm using. But start menu, start button works fine, select just fine, and and unlike the PS4 controller, so it actually corresponds like it should. So you see, X, you know, so the A is the bottom, it's triangle, circle. There you go. It's actually working just fine, and my other buttons are working just just fine as well too. And in all honesty, like playing like this isn't so bad. It's a, it's a little bit heavy, but. No, no, nothing too crazy. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start playing um, a game on the Gear VR to give you my true impression of the of the gamepad. So here we go. All right, guys. Well, I just got finished done playing with a game on the uh, on the Gear VR with the MOBA controller. And a couple things I found out that I probably should have mentioned in the uh, first half of the video is that there are actually two settings to the game. I mean, two settings to the controller. Now, what AMO does is AMO it actually it's actually for the enhanced games from the MOBA app that they have all they have a bunch of games on there that you can download and play, and that's strictly really meant for those. B mode turns it into like a normal game pad like the other ones you would see out there. So that's the one you want to use for when you're playing the majority of your games. I think A, a will work for some of them too, but um, for you Gear VR users. The um, B mode is what you want to be set on when you're playing your games because it wasn't reacting when I was in A mode. I thought it was broken, but when I flipped the switch over, it worked. So make sure, because, and then you can tell by that on the phone because you see here, there's MOBA Pro 2 and then MOBA Pro 2 HID, which is you see the gamepad symbol, and that's while it's in B mode. Another way you can look at it too is let me go to the, the app, and it says here, you want to sync both A and B. So when you say connect new controller, by the way, here's all the different controllers they have. So the Moga, the Moga Hero Power is the one that's for $59.99. So for like the ones you see for Samsung, this is my one thing against Samsung. Why is your control over $100 when it's like that? Um, I can just buy the one for $60 and be done with it. So there you go, folks. You can just buy that for $60. This one here, the Pro Power is 20 bucks more. I guess this piece of for the shape. Um, it's a lot more comfortable though. And then there's the uh, the Mega Pro, and there's one for the pocket, but that doesn't matter. But you just go ahead and select there, and then right in the bottom, when you say control, you say set up A and B. That's the one you want to do. Okay. So what else, so what did I think about the controller though? Overall, it's really good. I actually, it's a it's surprised even me. I mean, yes, it's not like the rubbery feeling. I guess the one you get from the the Pro version, but this is actually, like I said before, it feels like an Xbox controller, which I actually like. Um, the only the only negative side is it's plastic. So when your hands, if you're a sweater like me, uh, when your hands start perspirating and then it starts getting a little slick, uh, you start sliding around a little bit. But that's fine. Um, another downside, the uh, for me as a gamer, that is, there's no grip, really good grip on these joysticks. I mean, it's not bad, but once it starts getting a little slick, uh, it might be an issue for some of you. But overall, no major complaints other than that. I mean, the only reason why I, per I played a horror game, so that's that's why it became a little bit prevalent. But it's okay. It's actually really good. I'm actually quite happy with this purchase. I was thinking that I might buy this, and this was another case where I thought I might just buy it, not like it too much, and then just return it. But I think this is another keeper for me. So once again, um, if you skipped forward to if you skip forward to the review part, 
Um, the phone kind of goes in uh, via this little clamp that that snaps into place. So you have to push it up via a little bit, a little bit of a force. But you see how it just goes back in easily, and that's nice because it really, instead of manually locking in your phone, it locks in your phone for you. And there you go, and that's how it sits. So it's not too bad. I'm really happy with it. Let me just zoom out here. Boom. Ah, there we go. There we go here. So as you can see, this is how the layout will be. It's angled like this. It's actually a really good viewing angle, no matter which way you're looking at. And the phones these days too, they're not like the old CRT monitors where it starts to fade out when you're, I mean, you're not gonna be playing like the game like this. I mean, you're not, you're gonna be playing it up and down. Oh, there we go. <laughs> be careful of it shutting on you. But it's, it's really secure. I'm happy with it. I think you will be too. It, it was definitely a good purchase in my, in my opinion. I'm definitely not gonna return this, um, unless it breaks, obviously. I mean, but I like the fact that it can be it can work just as a normal controller or with your device. You can play with Chromecast, so it's a, it's a nice way to be able to play full screen games on your TV. But I think y'all, um, these things also have a uh, display out port that you can use as well. But this is just it's awesome. I think this is probably a really good one of the if you're a gamer that uses your mobile device a lot, this is an uh, this is a natural purchase for you, I believe, just because it's a great companion to have. Um, for those of you who are very casual gamers and you play and you're used to playing on the phone, maybe not worth the eighty dollars price tag in my opinion. But for for those of you who have the Gear VR or a heavy gameplay users, buy it. It's a necessity for you in my opinion. <laughs> oh man! But enough rambling on for me. I love it. That that's my opinion on it. I think you should definitely get it. Um, if you have a, if you have any questions on the controller or in general, please go ahead and leave a comment down below. I would love to hear you guys' opinion um, or just what you guys have to say. Let me if you have one, please let me know what you think of it. If you agree or disagree with me, uh, it was great. And as always, guys, please go ahead and leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you liked or disliked this video or me. <laughs> And as always, if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button to support my channel and to join our ever-growing community here. And um, if I don't see you guys next time, thank you for stopping by. I really do appreciate your time. But as always, I hope to see you in the next video or videos, plural. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I, re I really do appreciate it. Have a good night. Good day. Morning. Whenever you see this video. Bye-bye. Why, hi there. Did you actually stick through to the end of the video? Well, thank you. Um, just to let you know, the video that's playing next to me is actually a gameplay of me playing a game called Dread Halls, and that's the game I tested the controller with. It's probably the most horrifying game that I've ever played in my life, and if you like to see me scream like a baby, go ahead and watch that video, because I... I become... I... Mm, you see, I'm slurring my words just because I have no words to describe it. Just click it and watch it. And quickly, before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Right down below. I'm looking down. Right there. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Have a good day. All right. That's, been, that's enough. Stop recording.